second gear. What up everybody, welcome back to the last part of our triple turbo Honda build. We have to add an exhaust and a Black Sheep Industries wastegate. Best wastegate out there. Now Kyle, wouldn't it be better just to have a single turbo? It's probably way better and no turbo lag. Probably. But who else is going to test this for you guys? Because nobody else is doing it, so I might as well do it. What's the point of doing the same thing everybody else is doing? Don't you guys like to have fun? I love having fun. That's why we're doing different things. And if you're new to the build, it's a triple turbo compound setup. So how it works, the engine actually spins the small turbos up first. They're just gonna get atmospheric air from this turbo and they're actually gonna spin up first. And once you can drive more air into the engine, you can actually drive more fuel into the engine, which gives you more exhaust flow. So it's gonna spin the turbos even harder. So those turbos are gonna spin up first. They're gonna feed into the big turbo. The big turbo is gonna spin up second and then it's just gonna bypass through these turbos they're not gonna have a fun time, but that's how it's set up. So yes, the small turbos will spool first still. And the first thing we're going to be doing today, putting this Black Sheep Industries wastegate on. This is actually our own company, our own wastegate design. They're super awesome, super quality, super affordable. Check them out. We want it where these two pipes merge somewhere because it has to um, bypass the exhaust here. We could actually probably put it on the turbo. That might be the easiest way, and then it can just follow the exhaust out. We're just gonna mark the housing here. I also just realized I gotta take the whole manifold off right now. This bolt hole right here, I must have I must have switched the flange backwards because this bolt hole right here is too low or too high, and then the one on the other side over here is too high or too low, I can't remember. But it's gotta come off so I can drill out those holes a little bit more. We got the turbine wheel off. Probably shouldn't do that to a dry turbo. We're gonna go ahead, take both turbos off, the whole manifold, get it all off. Next time it goes on, final assembly. And remember, we're building our 420cc pit bike. If you wanna be entered to win this thing, boostlifestyle.com. Every $1, one entry. That was fast. Oh, that makes sense now. There's like a little piece in here that's like offset. So when you crush a pipe, you can stuff it in here and just weld the outside. You don't have to like butt weld it. This should have been the outside of the flange. I didn't realize that the flange wasn't symmetrical. This one's actually up a little bit higher than this one. And this one actually has to go up and this one actually has to come down a little bit. Um, so if you would have flipped it and put it the way it was supposed to be, it would have fit perfect. But these two bolts do not fit. So I just gotta have to adjust them a little bit. I didn't want to use this side because it was not gonna work for the round pipe that I was using. Dang, look at them garbage welds though. To be completely honest, I am not feeling good. Today is day three of having food poisoning. On Saturday, I ate McDonald's or KFC, because we had both of them. And when I got home on Sunday, I didn't feel good at all. And I like, ugh. And I was out of commission for a couple days, and today I am still not feeling the best. I feel like heat stroke. Pray for me. Give me likes, pray for me. Somebody definitely clearance the block at one point for a different turbo kit. <laughs> they just you were like, I don't need this support piece right there. I'm gonna just cut it out. Oh, look at that right there though. B16A2. This actually has forged pistons and rods in it. So uh, we got a pretty decent engine here. All right, let's cut up a big piece of this pipe. One and a half inch schedule 10 stainless. Some, like middle-class fancy stuff right here. And according to my 23andMe, I have 86% more Neanderthal DNA than everybody else which explains why everything's a hammer. Yep. Next up, holy saw. The holy saw. Gotta save my butthole sears. Slow that down. I actually have some like cutting oil. Whatever this oil is, I got it on Amazon. It's called the Master Fluid Solution. Pour a little bit on my bit. It'd be a little happier. And I've been known to hit myself in the face a couple times with this drill. There we go. Big ol' hole in our turbine housing. But first we're gonna weld it to this flange, and then this flange to this piece. Then clean it all out, mount our wastegate, boom, bam, done. 
Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm gonna be using 308 stainless on this because both pieces of these are stainless, and then 309 to weld stainless to cast because they're dissimilar metals, and that's what 309 is. Who doesn't love a little bit of fire? I haven't opened this thing in like two years, so it, it might explode. I don't know. Can it explode? Nope, it just works. I literally almost just grabbed that with my hands. Did you see that? You know what I should do? I should probably grind that down so it's like not content. Oh my God, I'm so smart sometimes. You know what? Most times it may look like I know what I'm doing, but really I'm just winging it. I mean, this will probably end up cracking, but I'm gonna use the torch on it anyways to hopefully slow down the heating process to give the cast a little bit more time to like cool. Sometimes you put this in sand, sometimes you just mig weld it, sometimes you just stick weld it, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It depends on how cool you are. So I'll be sitting here for the next 10 minutes trying to cool this thing down slowly. The holes in the manifold had to move too much, so I just kind of slotted them. They'll still grab. Maybe put big washers on them. It's just the outside pieces, whatever. Time to put it all back together so now we can finally start building our exhaust. Great. It's going back together. Didn't even try and hide the Black Sheep Industries wastegate. Just stuck it right on top. Black Sheep Industries. Maybe this will work? Nailed it. All right, perfect news. Everything is back together. Clamps on everything now too. You can see we can put boost to this thing. Now we just have to build our discharge for our turbo and the discharge for the wastegate, which I did find a three inch V-band laying around already connected to some pipe, win. We'll just have to modify that a little bit. And then we do have the discharge for the black sheep one. And that one's gonna go alongside this one. Let's get creative. Actually, let's not be creative. Let's just be stupid, because that's literally what the internet's saying I'm doing right now. Just, you blowing money, man. They don't realize that this is like less than an actual turbo. I spent like 400 bucks on these turbos. And Gina's just out here chilling in the sun, because nobody's son's chilling out in her. Yeah, always in the sun, but nobody's son is in me. <laughs> Tragic. <laughs> Tragic. Thirst trap? Thirst trap. And that's a good start. We'll probably weld this piece on to this piece. Now always, we're trying to do this on the cheap because the real race cars are where the money is spent, even though the real race car is not here and it's not running. I mean, that engine right there costs more than this whole car set up twice over, technically. And then there's this thing. But I did find some old used bends that I had. This kind of little dicky do going back here. I think I tried to do like a cool bullhorn thing once upon a time years ago with a chop saw, and that's what came out. And that, you can see I've already planned it out and marked it. But that's just gonna go on there like this. Nothing is perfectly straight on this thing, so just gonna end up something like that. Could end up a lot worse, but it could also end up a lot better but it's good enough. It'll be fine. That's what guys from Cars and Cameras say. He's uh, good for downforce. Uh, air go up, push car down. Good for front tire traction. Good good for downforce. Went ahead and put an O2 bung in it because you know you need to smell how much oxygen is in the exhaust. Also common misconception, the O2 does exactly what it says it does. It measures the oxygen in your exhaust and not the amount of fuel in it. So when it's like, oh, it's way too rich, there's too much fuel, the oxygen sensor isn't measuring how much fuel is in it. It's actually measuring the lack of oxygen in the exhaust. Fun fact. And if you didn't know what an O2 sensor does, well now you do, it measures the oxygen in the exhaust. It might be a little close to the end up there, but I didn't want to put it in the bottom either because that's too close to the turbine. So happy medium. The only reason not to have it this close to the exhaust pipe right here is that under low RPM, there's not enough exhaust flow to flow over that. And sometimes you've got a scavenging effect where air will actually come in here and disturb the reading because there's not enough exhaust flow to like keep continuous past the sensor. Um, but once you get into like full throttle and stuff, this is, this is fine. We gotta build that one now. You, how do we build you? 
probably just like a little quick quick bird up too. And here's a quick look-see with the hood on because it looks way better with the hood on, I find. And like I said, this, like, it used to look like a total sleeper and then I put the waste gate here and, and now you can totally tell that it's it's got a turbo on it. So I kind of ruined the sleeper look by putting the waste gate up here because I could have tucked it down there somewhere, but sometimes you gotta make sacrifices to have cool Black Sheep Industries stuff up on the top. And yeah, I thought about how I'm gonna control the boost. I didn't come up with a great solution, but I came up with a solution, which is better than not coming up with one, I guess. We got this thing. This is from a Pro-J intake manifold, which was on the Supra, which that was a long time ago. Two push lock fittings, two barb fittings, and what we're gonna do is this. Uh, I believe it was down here before, actually, on the quad turbo setup, because that's what controlled it before. We got a push lock fitting in this turbo, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come from this turbo into our um, vacuum manifold here, uh, out this one, that's gonna go to this turbo, and then both bar fittings are gonna go to each one of these turbos. So they're all gonna get the same pressure until we put a manual boost controller in here somewhere or electronic boost controller. But uh, just for now, so we have some sort of boost control, that's what it's going to get. And because it's such a sleeper, I think we should probably use a black push lock line instead of like blue or green, because that would totally give it away too. Mounted with these majiggies first though. Just like these, it's mounted right there. It comes from this turbo right here, down underneath, into the bottom port here. And then each one of these top ports, that turbo, all the way over here, that turbo. And then this last one for this turbo goes right to here. Celebratory fire up now for testing. I mean, just to hear what it sounds like, cause it should make more whirly noises. I'm just gonna put the hood back on cause it looks cooler. On the day we want to test it, it's actually raining outside, but we got to get rid of this super duper junk battery. Interstate, what kind of battery is that? It's garbage. Oh, that's grip strength right there for you. Little oh, things. Oh. To put that in perspective, by the way, 27 pounds, tough. Come on, dare you, five inches wide, just fingertips. Luckily our Canada proof one has a handle, like they all should come with handles. And uh, it's gonna be much easier because I can't do that again. Perfect. Now the only other thing I wish I had were hood pins so I could put the hood back on and I have some somewhere. It's just in the midst of building everything right now, I don't know where I put them. And I've been looking, I've been looking, but you can't find them. They might be with the other car actually. You know what, who cares about a little bit of rain? Let's give the people what they want. I got this dumb thing on my head, so hopefully I can get the good angles. Actually, maybe I can use this to tilt it the right way because, you know, it's all about perspective. You short guys know that, right? We are riding shotgun with a bunch of my uh, stuff from the Mustang, just because I had nowhere else to put it. And also, I found my 12 millimeter socket that I've been missing for a real long time. It's just been in the Honda. All right, we got our uh, S manager here, maybe? Question mark? We're just gonna set boost cut to like 15 PSI. Well, it still starts. It is dead rich though. Let me just check one more thing. I think it's running on all cylinders, so maybe it's just rich on startup. Can't see anything out of the window. Runs and drives like normal. Here's our boost gauge down here. <laughs> it's so quiet. 
There might not be enough gas in it. Those were my bolts on the trunk. Make sure you take everything off the car next time, Kyle. Look a hose. Now compared to the quad turbo Civic, it definitely makes boost faster, but I think it's hitting some sort of boost cut or something. Boost is down there on the bottom right, RPM on the left, obviously. I don't even know what side the gas tank's on, to be honest. I don't even know what I'm doing with Honda. If it was a Holly, I could figure it out. <laughs> Never a good time to fuel up while people are here. Card reader not working. Let's just get twenty dollars on this one. This one, close. Yeah. Who knows? It'll even last twenty bucks. Turbo, you put it on. <laughs> it's actually three turbos on there. Three turbos. <laughs> on a four cylinder. <laughs> on a four cylinder. Yep. <laughs> Uh, it might. It'll probably make like four or five hundred horsepower. But the motor is still four cylinder. Yep. <laughs> it's got aftermarket pistons and rods in it, so it's a bit tougher. But is that gonna last long? Who knows? <laughs> I'll be the first one to find out. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> for the record, you only get ten liters for twenty bucks in Canada. pounds of boost it's hitting some sort of cut though so adam please i need you to tune this thing in gear it made like eight pounds of boost by like 4500 rpm and this thing revs to 82 so the compound is definitely better than the quad turbo were that wastegate clamp might not be tight either because it's starting to clock a little bit Oh, there's Gina. <laughs> and what do you think about it? It's pretty obnoxious, but <laughs> you don't do it. This less. is obnoxious. Look at your beaver's helmet. How's this obnoxious though? Like this is me trying to recreate a character, whereas this is you trying to be obnoxious. Trying to be a character? Yeah. I feel like as So anybody who watches Dragon Ball Z, or Dragon Ball Super I should say, this yeah, is Beerus, sure. picture right here. Gina always does cosplays. You can find her at aliatrashkitty.com. Yeah, you. Classy dip in it. Trying to classy dip it. I'm trash. And for the record, she made this helmet, by the way. Yeah. That's real talent. She could probably make us, like, let's just say I wanted to make a frame for some. Where's the sun? Where's the sun? Let's just say I wanted to make a frame for something. We could make like a half-sized Volkswagen Beetle, technically. <laughs> and just like fiberglass, like she could make oh, that. Gonna... On the plus side, we didn't burn it down at all. Um, like I said, we need some hood pins for the hood. It did, thankfully, stop raining like as soon as I wanted to take this out of the garage. Oh, that's good. Well, it looks like we were getting 6.5 pounds of boost at 5,500 RPM. We're hitting some sort of cut here, which I can't figure out. Um, the only thing that we have set up at 5,500 is actually um, VTEC. So whether it's trying to do some sort of VTEC and uh, cutting itself out, but five, six, seven pounds of boost is kind of what I expected with this setup because I think the spring inside this is only five pounds and I think the springs um, connected to these are only like five pounds and even though it should be compounding we're still getting a little bit more than what we're supposed to and we're not fully up in the uh, rpm range so we don't know what it's going to do up near redline anyways still letting it dry lady oh it's gonna be a while i use like a whole can dang and then you gotta paint it after yeah <laughs> wah, wah. it's okay it's fun anyways i hope you guys enjoyed Wee!
<laughs> I'm Mario. I hope you guys enjoyed the triple compound Civic. Next thing we have to do is get it tuned so we can get it past that 5500 because I don't know why. It might even intake air temp sensor because we had to do that last time for some reason. But who knows? That might be the reason, actually. Anyways, I'll figure it out. I'll talk to Adam. Adam at AFR Auto Works, best dude ever for tuning. My favorite. I would mouth hug him with my mouth on his not mouth to get some information. And uh, yeah. Prove it. <laughs> wow. Called me right out. Fucking prove it. I want video proof. <laughs> wow. Okay, Adam. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> Anyways, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Peace easy. Get that V and shop Black Sheep Industries.